As usual, I fall a little behind with the videos. Uh, now we have a rainy day. I have plenty of work to do, so. Yeah, but I will try to catch up a little with the videos, maybe post a couple of them, we'll see how it goes. I will start with this one at least. Uh, I decided, because it's been a bit shaky in the cabin and I've had some kind of grinding noises, I think the cabin on the harvester have been sitting kind of on the chassis because the rubber mounts for it uh, are old and worn. Decided to uh, replace them. Have been waiting for a while. They've been on back order. The, the, I was tempted to do it last summer, but kind of held back on expenses a little, and this wasn't critical to repair. But now I decided to tackle it. Remove the pins in the back. They've been out several times since the machine was purchased. Um, no, nothing out of the ordinary getting them out and then I had borrowed one of those hydraulic porta pulver units and my dad had sourced some pipes and had it at a friend with a, a lathe that had made sure they were nice and square. We decided to escape from the rain for a little while but once that had stopped we came back out and kept going and they did not need a whole lot of power to, to force them out but it's so nice and smooth when you add hydraulic power to it the stroke on the cylinder was a little too short so we had to, to retake to get it out Still it needed a tiny bit of hammering, a little bit, a little bit, and the pusher pipe we used was a bit on the tight side, so that one needed a little bit of tapping to uh, go back out. Uh, this one uh, had a little bit of an issue, because here we could not use the, the pipe uh, on the other side because uh, the mount for the hydraulic block and uh, I think it's for, for where you put the cylinder that pushes the cabin up and everything. So we simply put a big washer on there and pulled on that inner pin. So we pulled hard on the rubber itself uh, and uh, was a little worried it was gonna rip out the inner part and give us a bit more of a headache. But pulling hard on the inner part and then gently tapping the outer race it started moving so we just kept doing that and was able to get it all the way out without too much trouble so the rear end is going according to plan really well we need to, to start looking at something special to push this one in also and the solution we came up with was uh, to not use the porta pover we had borrowed, but rather just a normal jack. And we found some wooden pieces and we decided to screw them into place so they wouldn't. It would be easier to line things up as we were gonna start pushing rather than having to hold more things. And with everything in place it was just a matter of start pushing I did add some because I think they came out a little bit on the easy side to be honest so I had a little bit of uh, glue to the new ones and since it was a little hard because uh, the new ones one side is kind of square and the other is rounded where the old ones had kind of rounded edges on both sides so but we decided to just try to do the same kind of lineup on both sides here and it should be fine and it's not uh, super precise and with them in place we could start bringing the cab back down you see here is it's kind of bends the inner pipe on one side so the rubber is kind of soft i thought it would be a lot stiffer on a new one but it's supposed to take vibration and all of that and i've not used the machine since doing this so 
We will see. The one side was lined up and the other wouldn't really line up super well even if you tried like pushing it up a little with the cabin tilt and so on. So we put a piece of old thread in there and kind of bent it up a little so so that the pin would line and as it has started to go in it was just a matter of hammering it in and removing that. So all in all the rear end went according to plan quite easily. So, pins in place and then the safety bolt the machine was started up to to tilt up the cab for better access uh, for the front end because I'm replacing all four of them. And with the cab upright uh, here I've also had to use or could use uh, old thread and, and uh, pull hammer or uh, to, to get out the pins. There is also a little bit of a metal plate, like a protective plate here in the front that needs to be removed for better access. And a long strap was placed around the cab, secured up to the uh, bar at the top of the cab with some smaller straps. I was a little worried about tilting it back that the, the hydraulic uh, cylinder for tilting the cab forward, because we had not removed that, that that would cause issues. Uh, once we uh, started pulling it back, but we decided to go slow and try it. Uh, this can't be used on the rear ones because the lock tabs has been removed at some point and welded, so you don't have access to the threaded part of the pin, but here in the front the, the threaded part works. And pins came out a lot easier than I expected because I know we had a little bit of an issue first time we took out the pins on the on the rears I thought this was these were gonna give us trouble but no it came out a lot easier one of the rubber bushings here in the front looked like it had twisted a little it was not like it leveled because they are if you seen them they are not uh, perfectly symmetrical. They are made to be installed in a specific way, and one did not uh, was not either. It was not installed correctly, or it had shifted at some point when the cab has been tilted up. So uh, I'm gluing these also in place to to reduce the risk of that of it shifting over time, and then. Just pressing them in place. Uh, we were, was a little worried that the brake cylinder that sticks down from the cab here would be in the way, but it didn't cause any issues. Happy with the first one, and then the next one could be pulled out. Same procedure came out no real issues and then the new one was pushed in it was a quick jump here between <laughs> pulling out the new one and the old one and installing the new one and then my dad lowered the cab as I had a brake bar and kind of aligned the cab with the new bushings Oops, I slipped Sorry if I scared you. <laughs> and once it was lined up with the holes, the pins could be driven in. Here they had the extra safety still on them. The rear ones probably had this also at some point, but I skipped adding them because you guess you tilt up the rear end a lot more often than you touch the front end. And here you can see that extra safety is a tab you put on there and a second bolt on the other side. So extra safe that the pins won't come out. A bit overkill, but better just install it. And then I was going to tackle... Yeah, we removed the 
this is a big strap but I was gonna tackle a little small leak I've had here on the brake and this one I have had apart before before I learned that uh, you're not supposed to have these Tredo washers where there there is a washer with like a built-in rubber yeah it had sunk a little overnight there is supposed to be an o-ring and uh, an outer metal part on these I've since purchased the correct o-rings and can just replace the o-rings but here that uh, that washer was tossed and what I could source locally was just a complete one so that was replaced and installed so hopefully it won't be any small dribbles from the brake anymore and then it could be started lifted up we all had also noticed that the new parts for the source saw bar clamp uh, had started rusting and I'm not sure that inner part seems to be of a more rust prone uh, material than that outer part where the actual saw bar sits I decided to because this machine will sit for a little while longer before it's put to any good use so I decided to separate pieces and coat it in grease to to preserve it uh, and stop stop it from rusting anymore until it's used it's a tight fit with a brand new saw bar. So. Coated all the surface even on that uh, outer part that does not seem to really rust as much. But I figured it would be nice. Yeah, a good healthy coat of grease. That's it for the wrenching on the harvester. It's just been sitting since this video was shot. Uh, the more branching I've done something on the forwarder also that I will try to cover in a video soon. Take care out there. Stay safe.